I was sitting on the sofa in my room, bored out of my mind. It was so quiet, there was no music, and there was no one to chat with. I got up from the sofa and walked to the window, where I saw a few squirrels running around outside. This sight excited me a little, but then a thought suddenly popped into my head. Why are we closed today? It's President's Day. I thought for a moment, and an idea came to mind. I decided to do some yoga. I have not done yoga in a long while, and I think it would be a good exercise. So I took out my yoga mat, rolled it out on the floor, and started to stretch. I felt my muscles loosen and my body became more relaxed. I couldn't believe how much I missed doing yoga. After an hour of yoga, I finally felt like I had enough exercise for the day. I picked up my yoga mat and put it back in its place. I then thought about what to do next. Then an idea came to me. I thought it would be nice to go out for a train ride. I haven't been on one in a long time and the scenery was always beautiful. After leaving the yoga room, I headed towards the kitchen. I was starting to feel hungry and the idea of a bacon, egg and cheese sandwich with some fries sounded delicious. As soon as I entered the kitchen, I got started. I took out some bacon, eggs and cheese and began to prepare the sandwich. I then put the sandwich in the toaster to toast it to perfection. While waiting, I decided to get some potatoes out to cut and fry them. After a few minutes, the sandwich was all set. It was golden brown and the cheese was melted perfectly. So without wasting a moment, I grabbed the sandwich and the plate of fries and headed towards the dining room to enjoy my breakfast. The sandwich was mouth-watering and the fries were nice and crispy. It was a perfect start to the day. After finishing my breakfast, I washed my dish and put it back in the cupboard. I felt a sudden burst of energy after eating such a hearty breakfast, so I decided it would be a good time to get dressed in my casual outfit. I walked back to my room and picked out a comfortable outfit, a pair of jeans, and a cute top and put them on. I then applied some light makeup and brushed my hair. I walked up to the bathroom mirror where I saw my reflection staring back at me. I took out my golden lipstick and applied it to my lips. The golden hue added a touch of glamour to my makeup. Feeling satisfied with my appearance, I smiled at myself in the mirror and headed out of the bathroom to begin my day. As I left the bathroom, I stood in front of the windows in my room and looked out at the sunny day outside. The trees were swaying gently in the breeze, the birds were chirping, and the sky was a beautiful shade of blue. It was a peaceful scene, and it made me feel at ease and content. I stood there for a moment, feeling grateful for the beauty of nature and the simple joys of life. After basking in the scenery outside, I suddenly had a thought, I've never ridden a train before. All this time I had been just teleporting, never experiencing the journey of being on a train. The idea of riding a train seemed exciting and adventurous, so I decided that today would be the day I tried it for the first time ever. After deciding to try riding a train today, I teleported to the main stage, where I saw my friend Ferdina Fazbear. We had never been separated and always did everything together. Today, however, I wanted to try something new on my own. I approach Ferdina with a smile on my face and tell her my plans of riding the train. After sharing my plan, I could see a smile come to Fredna's face. She said, have fun, and that it was good that I wanted to try something new and explore. I was glad to see my friend supportive of my decision and knowing that she wanted me to have a good time. I closed my eyes and focused on the image of the train station in my mind. With a loud whooshing sound, I suddenly felt weightless and the familiar sensation of a shift in space. When I opened my eyes, I realized that I had teleported successfully and I was now standing at the entrance of the train station. At the entrance of the station, there was a kiosk selling train tickets. I approached it and waited in line behind a few people. Once it was my turn, I asked the ticket seller for a ticket, but suddenly I realized I didn't know where I was going. Embarrassed at myself for not knowing my destination, I looked around at the station signboards for inspiration. Searching the station signboards for inspiration, my eyes landed on a large schedule that showed the various trains that traveled different distances. As I looked closely, I saw marked on the schedule a train with the words express and around the world. My eyes lit up. This train seemed like the perfect choice. So without further hesitation, I bought a ticket for that train. Armed with my ticket, I made my way towards platform 12. As I walked towards the platform, I saw various people waiting to board the train. 
I felt excited and a bit nervous. As this was the first time I'm riding a train, I stood at the edge of the platform and looked down the track, eagerly waiting for the train to arrive. As I waited on the bench at the platform, I decided to pass the time by browsing on my phone. I opened my phone and started scrolling through social media, checking out the latest news and memes. Time seemed to pass by quickly, and I soon heard the sound of a whistle and the distant rumble and screech of the train's wheels on the tracks. As the train pulled into the station, my eyes widened in utter disbelief at the sight before me. The entire train was painted a brilliant, shiny gold. The steam locomotive and the passenger cars sparkled in the sunlight like jewels. I stood up from the bench, my mouth agape in shock and amazement. As I stared at the golden train in front of me, a thought flashed in my mind. Was this train painted in gold because of me? It was unlikely and hard to believe, but it was still a possibility. I couldn't help but feel a surge of excitement and flattery at the possibility that the train may have been painted because of me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The train, gleaming in gold, was breathtaking to behold. It was like someone had painted it in my honor. A wave of excitement and joy washed over me as I considered the possibility that someone had done this out of their love and admiration for me. As I stood there gawking at the beautiful locomotive, an idea popped into my head. I should take a picture to remember this rare moment. I quickly whipped out my phone and snapped a couple of pictures, making sure to capture the sparkle of the train in all its golden glory. After taking some pictures of the gleaming train, I couldn't contain my excitement anymore. It was time to get on board and experience my first ever train ride. I approached the entrance to the train and stepped inside, my heart racing with anticipation and my eyes darted around, eagerly taking in the sights. As I stepped inside the train, I was met with the sight of a lovely wooden brown interior. The walls were accented with a soft brown hue, giving a cozy and cozy atmosphere to the train car. Fancy wall lamps illuminated the space with warm, yellowish glow, casting a welcoming aura over everything. Looking around, I was pleasantly surprised by how comfortable and elegant the inside of the train looked. It was quite different from what I had imagined. As I continued exploring the train car, I looked at the seats. They were plush and luxurious with soft, velvet-like fabric covering them. I ran my hand across the seat cushion, feeling its comfortable and smooth texture. The seats were arranged in a way that created a sense of space and intimacy. Overall, the seats looked incredibly comfortable and like they would provide a relaxing and enjoyable ride. I sat down on one of the plush, soft seats and immediately felt a sense of comfort and relaxation wash over me. The seat cushion was like sinking into a cloud, cradling my body in its fluffy embrace. I let out a sigh of contentment, feeling all my worries and tensions melt away. As if that wasn't enough, the seat was also slightly warm, providing a cozy heat that helped me feel even more relaxed and at ease. As I sat on the comfy seat, enjoying the relaxation and warmth, I suddenly heard a loud whistle blow. The sound was shrill and urgent, sending a jolt of excitement through me as I realized what it meant the train was about to leave. I sat up straight and watched as the scenery outside the window blurred and we began to move pulling away from the station and starting our journey. As the train moved further and further away from the station, I couldn't help but smile at the realization that I was riding on a train that was golden, just like me. The coincidence was almost too incredible to believe, and for a brief moment, I felt like the entire world was celebrating and honoring me. Feeling a rush of joy and satisfaction, I leaned back in my seat and continued watching as the scenery whizzed by outside the window. As the train continued its journey, it took us through a variety of different landscapes. We passed through tranquil fields, vibrant towns, and peaceful neighborhoods, each one offering a glimpse into the beauty and diversity of the world around us. I watched as the scenery outside the window changed, marveling at the ever-changing views. The train's movement was smooth and gentle, lulling me into a sense of contentment and relaxation. As the train journey continued, I took out my phone to send a quick message to my friends Fredina, Bonfi, Chiku, Fexa, and Marie, letting them know about my exciting adventure. I wrote, hey guys, guess what? I just hopped on a shiny golden train and it's amazing. The train is literally painted golden just like me. How cool is that? As I texted my friends, 
I couldn't help but think about my handsome and badass husband Jotaro from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. With a smile on my face, I sent him a quick message as well. Hey babe, check this out. I'm riding on a golden train right now and it's beautiful. I wish you were here with me. Love you. As I thought about Jotaro and his muscular physique, my mind began to wander to some rather naughty places. The thought of him flexing his muscles in front of me was turning me on, and I found myself getting lost in a fantasy of being in his strong arms, feeling his hard muscles pressed against me. Just imagining it made my heart race and my body tingle with desire. I couldn't believe the effect he had on me. I was completely under his spell. As the train continued its journey, it passed through more towns and cities. The scenery outside the window kept changing, shifting from natural landscapes to concrete jungles. The train was gaining speed as it traveled through the different locations, allowing me to get a glimpse of them as they quickly whizzed by. I watched as the cities and towns gradually morphed into one another, creating a beautiful and dynamic tableau of human development. As the train journey continued, excitement and contentment filled my heart. I couldn't help but think about the possibility of bringing my husband Jotaro and my friends to experience this incredible ride. I pictured us all sitting together on the luxurious seats, marveling at the stunning golden paint job. We would chat, laugh, and share our enjoyment of being on this unique and extraordinary train. It would be a moment to remember, full of warmth and the joy of being together. As the train continued on its journey, my mind drifted back to the day I first met Jotaro. It had been a late and dark night when I had stumbled upon Jotaro at a small convenience store. He was standing at the counter, looking deep in thought. His handsome face and muscular figure immediately caught my eye, but I could sense that he was troubled. I remember the feeling of sparks flying between us, the instant connection and attraction that was almost undeniable. As the train continued on, images of Jotaro and our precious moments together passed through my mind. I remembered the day he proposed to me, a warm and sunny afternoon in the park. The ring glittered in the sunlight as he got down on one knee, his eyes filled with love and adoration. I also thought about our wedding day, which was just as beautiful and perfect. He looked so handsome and dashing in his suit, and I couldn't have been more overjoyed. The memories filled me with warmth and contentment. As I recollected the memories of our wedding day, I thought about how I had looked in the wedding dress. It had been a beautiful, flowing dress. The fabric shimmered and sparkled under the warm sunlight. The lace detailing and the way it accentuated my curves made me feel like a fairy tale queen. I remembered the look on Jotaro's face as he saw me walking down the aisle, his eyes widening in amazement and wonder. It was a moment I would remember forever. The memories of our wedding day and the look on Jotaro's face as I walked down the aisle filled me with a flood of emotions. Tears of joy welled up in my eyes as I recalled the love and happiness I felt at that moment. It had been an incredibly special and meaningful day, one that symbolized the start of our lives together. As I wiped away the tears, I couldn't help but feel grateful for the wonderful man I had married and the beautiful life we were building together. The train continued its journey, and soon the scenery outside the window began to change again. The towns and sights gave way to dense woods and forests. I looked out the window at the dense trees that lined the tracks, their branches swaying gently in the breeze. The forest seemed to stretch on for miles, a vast expanse of nature that provided a peaceful and scenic backdrop to the journey. As the train continued its journey, the breathtaking landscape continued to change. The forests gave way to towering mountains, their peaks stretching towards the sky like natural giants. Along the way, the train passed through several tunnels that drilled through the mountains. The darkness inside the tunnels was momentarily broken by bursts of sunlight in between each tunnel, creating a beautiful and unique journey. As the train traveled through the mountains, the train's whistle blew loudly, echoing through the vast, rocky terrain. The sound was a mix of urgency and excitement, urging us onward as we zigzagged through the narrow passes and tunnels. I could feel the wind howling around us, picking up in intensity as we navigated the rugged and untamed mountain range. The train continued its trek through the rugged mountains and dense forests, providing a picturesque view of nature at its finest. The trees in the forest stood tall and strong, their tops reaching high into the sky. 
Some of them were covered in moss, giving them a mysterious and magical aura. The smell of pine and fresh earth filled the air, and the sound of birdsong echoed through the forest. As the train continued through the dense forests of the mountains, I couldn't help but notice the rivers that wound their way through the landscape. They glittered like silver ribbons in the sunlight, their water rushing rapidly in the mountain streams. Further down, the rivers appeared as thin silvery lines snaking through the forests. The trees by the rivers were lush and abundant, bending gently with the ebb and flow of the water. As I took in the sights and sounds of the train ride, I couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of happiness and contentment. The landscape outside the window was stunning and diverse. From the rocky peaks of the mountains to the deep forests and crystal clear rivers, it was like a painting come to life, full of vivid colors and mesmerizing beauty. The train was smooth and comfortable, providing a relaxing and enjoyable ride. I couldn't imagine anything that could make this journey more perfect. As the train continued onward, it soon entered the bustling city of Chicago. I remembered that Bonfi had taken a vacation here a few weeks ago, and now I could see for myself why she had enjoyed it so much. The tall skyscrapers loomed in the distance, their imposing structures creating an impressive skyline. The city was alive with activity, cars honking and people rushing about, creating a vibrant and energetic atmosphere. As I watched the view outside the window, I felt a jolt of confusion as the train suddenly seemed to veer off course and begin heading towards the beach. My heart raced in my chest, and a feeling of panic washed over me. I thought for a moment that the train might crash as it barreled towards the sand and the water. I braced myself for the worst, but suddenly the train slowed down and came to a gentle stop on the sandy shores. As my panic started to subside, I watched in amazement as the train shuddered before picking up speed and beginning to travel over the water. The tracks extended out into the body of water, seemingly floating on top. The sight was surreal, and I suddenly realized that this must be a floating railway. The train continued its journey over the water, gliding smoothly over the shimmering surface. As the floating railway continued, the view of the ocean outside the window was simply breathtaking. The water sparkled in the sunlight, its surface alive with tiny waves that rippled gently in the breeze. The vastness of the ocean, stretching out in all directions, created a sense of peace and tranquility. I settled back in my seat, feeling completely relaxed and at ease, watching the waves gently lap at the rails of the floating railway. The floating railway continued its journey, and I watched as the train's wheels dipped down and skimmed across the surface of the water. As they did so, they stirred up a spray of droplets that glistened in the sunlight, creating a beautiful and mesmerizing effect. The sound of the waves gently slapping against the rails, combined with the soothing rhythm of the train's movement, creating a peaceful and serene atmosphere. I felt completely at ease, lulled into a state of relaxation by the tranquil scene outside my window. As the floating railway journey continued, the train traveled for hours over the water. The sound of the train's whistle cutting through the air created a sense of anticipation and excitement, as if saying, here I am on top of the world. The sound of the whistle echoed over the vast expanse of water, carrying a sense of adventure and freedom. I felt a rush of adrenaline as the train raced onward, its wheels kicking up spray as it went. The experience was thrilling and unforgettable. As the train continued over the water, the sky suddenly turned dark and ominous. The sound of distant thunder rumbled through the air, echoing ominously over the water. I looked out the window to see the beginnings of a storm gathering on the horizon. Clouds loomed ominously overhead, blotting out the sunlight. I felt a sense of trepidation as the train continued its journey through the gathering storm. As the storm intensified, the train continued its journey over the water, despite the worsening conditions. The sky was now blackened with thick clouds, and the wind howled around us like a wild beast. The waves beneath us grew larger and more aggressive, crashing against the tracks and spraying water all around. I couldn't help but feel worried as the storm raged on, fearing that the train might crash or derail in the turbulent weather. I prayed for our safety as the train pushed forward, battling against the wrath of the storm. As the storm continued to rage, the train managed to navigate the tumultuous waves with surprising grace and agility. It seemed to ride up the front of the waves and then descend down the backs of them, as if it was a surfer riding the perfect wave. 
I watched in amazement as the train skillfully maneuvered the waves, effortlessly avoiding any capsizing, despite the strength of the storm. It seemed as if the train was built to withstand even the most ferocious of waters, making me feel a newfound sense of reverence and awe for its power. As the train continued its journey through the storm, I couldn't help but worry about the other passengers in the other cars. I wondered how they were coping with the turbulent conditions, and if they were experiencing the same level of fear as I was. Suddenly, the intercom came to life with the captain's voice, soothing any anxieties. Attention, passengers. Please remain in your seats and stay buckled in. The skilled engineer will navigate us safely through the storm. Thank you for your cooperation. The train continued to bravely ride up and down the gigantic waves, its engineer skillfully maneuvering the tracks and keeping the wheels skimming over the water's surface. Despite the intense storm and the size of the waves, the train was able to maintain its balance and stability, proving its resilience and robustness. I marveled at the engineering prowess that had gone into creating such a sturdy and reliable vehicle, able to withstand the fury of nature itself. The storm continued to rage on, engulfing the train in its whirlwind of turbulence and chaos. The lightning flashed across the sky, illuminating the tumultuous waves and creating a breathtaking display of power. The train, undeterred, continued its journey, its wheels skimming over the surface of the water with each wave. The passengers inside were jolted around by the force of the storm, but the train itself seemed unfazed as it pushed onwards, determined to navigate its way through the fury of nature. As the storm continued its onslaught, the train found itself weaving through gaps in the waves, cutting a path through the churning waters. At times, the waves became so enormous that it felt as if the train was being lifted high into the air, only to be dropped suddenly as it descended the back of the wave. Despite the intense force of the storm, the train pushed through, its wheels skimming and bouncing over the water's surface as it rode up and down the waves with skilled dexterity. The train's whistle rang out once more, its sound echoing out into the storm, carried far and wide by the swirling winds. It was a call to arms, a sound of defiance in the face of overwhelming adversity, a declaration that the train would not be defeated by the storm. The whistle, although small in comparison to the might of the storm, stood out as a symbol of courage and resilience, proclaiming to the world that no matter the odds, the train would continue its journey. It was a powerful moment filled with hope and determination. The scene outside my window had become almost apocalyptic as the storm gained intensity. It felt like something straight out of a movie, like the scene in the Polar Express where the train races across the ice, except instead of the icy tundra, I was witnessing a raging storm in the vastness of the ocean. The waves lashed out at the train like wild beasts, their towering heights threatening to engulf us completely. It was both terrifying and mesmerizing an experience that would stay etched in my memory forever. After what felt like an eternity, the storm gradually began to subside. The clouds gradually thinned out, clearing to reveal a bright blue sky. The waves grew calmer, and the train no longer had to navigate through the treacherous waters. As if on cue, the sun broke through the clouds, casting a warm and soothing light over the water's surface. The atmosphere was almost peaceful, and I couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief grateful to finally be free from the fury of the storm. The train continued its journey, and now it was approaching the coast of Tokyo, Japan. In the distance, I could see the first glimpses of the city, its skyscrapers and buildings standing like sentinels against the bright blue sky. The sun was now shining brightly, casting a warm glow over the city and bathing the ocean in a brilliant light. As we drew closer to shore, the train started to gradually slow down, ready to come to a stop. As we neared the city, the train slowed down further as it navigated the soft, sandy beach. It was a strange sight to see, watching a train travel on the sand, but it was a necessary step as it maneuvered towards the railroad tracks that led into the city. The train crept forward, its wheels finding purchase on the sandy surface and propelling it closer to the tracks where it would join the rest of the city's rail system. As the train moved through the city, I couldn't help but marvel at the dazzling array of buildings and neon lights that adorned the skyline. The city was a symphony of sight and sound, with towering skyscrapers standing side by side with modern and traditional architecture. The neon lights glowed with a fierce intensity, casting a colorful and energetic glow over the streets below. 
It was a beautiful and unique cityscape, unlike anything I had ever seen before. As the train continued its journey, the landscape began to change, becoming more rugged and hilly. The trees grew taller and thicker, and the air was filled with the scent of pine. I saw a sign that said, Willkommen in Deutschland, welcome to Germany, and realized that we had just entered Europe. I looked out the window and saw the first glimpses of Germany, its rolling hills and quaint villages, bringing to mind picturesque scenes from a fairy tale book. We were now officially in Germany, ready to begin a new phase of our journey. As I looked out the window, I noticed that we were passing through a countryside filled with both modern farms and villages and traditional historical architecture. The farms were modern and efficient, with fields stretching out in every direction and state-of-the-art machinery visible in the distance. Yet, at the same time, the villages were a mix of both new and old, with centuries-old buildings standing proudly among the modern structures. It was a fascinating sight to see, a representation of the country's rich history and forward-looking modernity. As the train continued along its journey, the landscape began to transform. We passed by a few castles, their stone walls and towering spires standing tall against the horizon. The medieval villages also came into view, their narrow cobblestone streets and quaint houses creating a charming and peaceful atmosphere. In the distance, I could see the outline of a massive cathedral, its Gothic architecture standing out against the backdrop of the surrounding countryside. It was a sight to behold, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and reverence. The train continued on its journey, passing through Nuremberg and heading towards Ansbach. The land began to slope gently, the hills becoming more pronounced as we continued on our way. The countryside grew more open and expansive, the rolling hills and fields stretching out as far as the eye could see. The skyline was dominated by the silhouettes of distant mountains, their peaks piercing the sky with their rugged beauty. It was a breathtaking sight, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of awe as I soaked in the stunning scenery. As the locomotive continued on towards its destination, it passed through Ansbach and began heading towards France. The landscape shifted from rolling hills to more rolling plains, with the occasional small town dotting the countryside. The sky was bright blue with only a few puffs of cloud, and the sun was a warm yellow, casting long shadows on the ground below. The wind blew softly, bringing with it a gentle breeze and the scent of freshly cut grass. It was a peaceful and serene scene, the perfect backdrop for our journey. The train crossed over the border into France, and I watched as the landscape shifted from the rolling plains of Germany to the rolling hills of France. I could sense a subtle difference in the air, a change in the mood that could only be described as distinctly French. The countryside was dotted with quaint little villages and farmhouses, their stone walls and red rooftops adding a touch of charm to the landscape. It was a picturesque scene, straight out of and French countryside fairy tale. As the train reached Paris, it suddenly jumped off the tracks and began traveling down the city streets. I watched in amazement as the train skillfully weaved through the narrow alleys and winding streets, its wheels gliding smoothly over the cobblestones. The city was a sight to behold, with its elegant architecture and romantic atmosphere. I saw the iconic Eiffel Tower towering high above the buildings and the River Seine winding its way through the city. The train continued its journey through Paris, passing by other iconic monuments such as the Arc de Triomphe, the Louvre Museum, and the Notre Dame Cathedral. Each structure had its own unique style and history, yet they all worked together to create a vibrant and diverse skyline. I felt as though I was watching a living museum, with each building telling its own story and adding to the city's rich cultural heritage. As the train left the city of Paris, it re-entered the railroad tracks and started making its way towards Ireland. The French countryside passed by outside the window, with its rolling hills, vast fields, and picturesque villages. The sky was a tranquil blue, and the air was filled with the scent of fresh grass and wildflowers. As the train carried on, I couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement growing inside me. Ireland was getting closer, and I couldn't wait to discover its beauty and history. I looked at the time and saw it was only 10.25 a.m., which surprised me. I couldn't believe that it was still so early in the day, as the journey so far had been eventful and filled with so many memorable sights. The sun was still high in the sky, bathing the landscape with its warm rays. 
I marveled at how much we had already seen in such a short amount of time, and I wondered what other wonders we would come across on our journey to Ireland. The train finally crossed into the stunning green countryside of Ireland at 10.35 a.m. From the window, I saw the rolling hills and lush greenery that this beautiful country was known for. The sky was a brilliant blue, and the air was crisp and clean. Ireland was a sight to behold, with its natural beauty and unique culture. The train trundled along, revealing more and more of the country's captivating landscapes. As the train traveled through Ireland, I couldn't help but notice that the grass here appeared even brighter and greener than anywhere else I had ever seen. The countryside was like a giant canvas, with sweeping valleys and rolling hills covered in a vibrant shade of emerald green. The fields were dotted with white and purple wildflowers, their delicate petals bobbing in the gentle breeze. It was a sight to behold, and I couldn't tear my gaze away from the picturesque landscape. Watching the landscape of Ireland whiz by, my thoughts turned to Jack Septici, my favorite YouTuber who is originally from Ireland but now lives somewhere in England. I couldn't help but think about his recent venture, Top of the Morning Coffee, and how proud he must be to have started his own coffee business. The beautiful and bright landscape of Ireland reminded me once again of Jack Septici's Irish roots and how proud he must be of his heritage. His coffee business seemed to perfectly encapsulate the spirit and pride of his homeland. As I continued to marvel at the picturesque Irish countryside, my thoughts turned to the idea of trying Jack Septici's top of the morning coffee. It sounded like a cup of positivity and energy. The idea of sipping on a hot cup of coffee, carefully blended and perfected by one of my favorite YouTubers, seemed like a tempting proposition. I made a mental note to order some top-of-the-morning coffee at some point when it became available. The Golden Train continued its journey through the stunning green countryside of Ireland. I couldn't get enough of the breathtaking beauty of the landscape, with its rolling hills, sparkling rivers, and rugged coastlines. From the window, I could see the traditional Irish villages and towns scattered throughout the countryside, each one filled with the charm and character of the Emerald Isle. The train's wheels clattered over the tracks, and the whistle blew as we traveled through the Irish countryside, exploring the rich history and beauty of this captivating country. As the train continued its journey, it started heading north towards England. The landscape began to shift, with the rolling green fields of Ireland giving way to the more rugged terrain of England. The sky grew overcast, and the temperature dropped slightly, creating a completely different atmosphere from the bright and sunny Irish countryside. The train moved towards the coast, preparing to cross the English Channel. The train rumbled through the Euro Tunnel towards England, traveling through the long underground passage beneath the English Channel. After a brief journey through the darkness, we emerged in the bustling city of London. The skyline of London was a mixture of traditional and modern buildings, with the iconic landmarks like the Big Ben and the London Eye dominating the horizon. The sky was a cloudy gray, typical of London's weather. As the train left the tracks behind, it navigated the chaotic streets of London. The train weaved through narrow alleys and crossed over bridges, its wheels gliding smoothly over the cobblestone roads. I was amazed at how the train managed to maneuver through the busy London traffic, ducking under low bridges and swerving around cars and buses. It was a sight to behold, a testament to the train's impressive engineering and the skill of its driver. Passing through the winding streets of London, the train glided past the iconic Big Ben clock tower. The grand structure loomed high above the surrounding buildings, its face proudly displaying the time. The train weaved through the city, passing by other famous landmarks such as the Houses of Parliament and the River Thames. Each structure had its own unique style and history, adding to the vibrant and diverse skyline of London. The train set off again, heading towards the west coast of England. The landscape outside the window changed, with rolling hills and quaint villages giving way to more rugged and windswept cliffs. The sky was a brilliant blue, with a few white clouds lazily floating by. As the train traveled closer to the coast, I could see the English Channel glistening in the distance, its waves cresting and crashing against the shore. From here, it was only a matter of time before we crossed the ocean and returned to the United States. The train continued its journey, leaving the sand behind and venturing onto the open water. 
the train's wheels glided over the surface, leaving behind a gentle ripple in the ocean water. As I looked out the window, I could see the endless expanse of the ocean stretching out in every direction. The horizon was a stark line between the deep blue water and the clear blue sky, with the occasional birds soaring overhead. I took a deep breath and savored the feeling of being at sea, knowing that our journey was coming to an end. As the train continued its journey across the water, I couldn't help but worry about the possibility of another storm at sea. The last time we had been caught in a storm, it had been quite a harrowing experience. The train had been rocked by rough waves and the wind had battered us with rain and sleet. But despite my worries, I tried to remain optimistic. The weather was looking clear and there was no reason to believe that we would encounter another storm. As my worries about the potential for another storm at sea began to fade, I remembered that the train was too powerful to be taken out by any storm. The strong and sturdy construction of the train, combined with its advanced engineering and design, meant that it could withstand even the strongest winds and roughest waters. With this in mind, I felt reassured and continued to enjoy the journey across the ocean, watching the waves below and the birds above. The train continued to travel across the Atlantic Ocean, its sturdy wheels gliding over the surface. The sky was a brilliant blue, with only a few fluffy white clouds scattered across the expanse. The ocean was calm and peaceful, with only a few gentle waves gently lifting the train as it made its way across the water. I looked out the window and marveled at the beauty of the sea, the way it sparkled under the bright sun, and how the birds soared above, their wings outstretched as they rode the currents of the air. As the clock struck 12 p.m., the train found itself in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I looked out the window and marveled at the tranquility of the waters. It was a peaceful moment, with only a few gentle waves caressing the sides of the train. The sky was a beautiful light blue, with a few fluffy white clouds scattered across the expanse. The sun was shining brightly, casting a warm and gentle light over us. It was a moment of peace and tranquility, a time to reflect on our journey so far. Suddenly, a storm approached in the distance, but it looked different from what we had seen before. The bottom of the storm was lower and darker, and it appeared more ominous and menacing. The sky darkened, turning a foreboding shade of gray, and the wind began to pick up, stirring the water into choppy waves. The birds that had been flying overhead had vanished, fleeing from the approaching storm. As the storm grew closer and darker, I realized with a sinking feeling in my stomach that this was no ordinary thunderstorm. I recognized the dark, lower clouds and the increasing wind speeds as the telltale signs of a hurricane. The thought of the train being caught in a hurricane was terrifying. The wind picked up even more, howling and shrieking as it battered against the windows of the train. I could hear the roar of the waves crashing against the train's wheels. As the train entered the hurricane, the waves became gigantic, their size comparable to towering tsunamis. The water churned and boiled, creating a chaotic and treacherous ocean. The train rocked and swayed wildly as it was pummeled by the massive waves, its wheels slipping on the uneven surface. The train continued its fight against the raging storm, climbing up, down, and around the colossal waves. The train's wheels gripped onto the water as it navigated the hazardous waters, making impossible turns and dives as it struggled to stay the course. I held onto the walls tightly, my heart pounding in my chest as we careened up and down the enormous waves, each one threatening to throw us off course and send us tumbling into the depths below. The storm rumbled above us, its thunderous applause echoing across the turbulent sky. Lightning flashed and crackled, zigzagging across the sky and illuminating the violent scene with its bright, eerie glow. The train continued to ride the massive waves, each one more furious and dangerous than the last. I clung to the walls, trying to keep my balance as the train jerked and jerked in the chaotic ocean. As the train approached the eye wall of the hurricane, the already dire situation escalated. The eye wall was the most powerful part of the storm, and seeing it coming towards us filled me with dread. Worse yet, there were 60 tornadoes swirling all around us, each one a deadly vortex of wind and debris. We were in the midst of a perfect storm, caught in the jaws of a monster that seemed determined to swallow us whole. Despite the onslaught of tornadoes and towering waves, the golden train held its ground. Its powerful wheels ripped onto the water and propelled the train through the monstrous waves, 
effortlessly dodging the tornadoes that whirled around us. The train dipped in dove, surfing up, down, and around the colossal waves, all the while avoiding the deadly tornadoes that seemed intent on destroying us. After what felt like an eternity, the train finally reached the eye of the hurricane. The storm that had raged around us suddenly quieted, and a sense of calm washed over the scene. In the middle of the eye, the sky was a bright blue with only a few scattered clouds, and the sea was smooth and still. It was a moment of peace and tranquility, a stark contrast to the chaos and danger we had just endured. As I surveyed the serene atmosphere of the eye of the hurricane, I knew that it was fleeting. We would have to pass through the other side of the storm to get out, and the prospect of it filled me with dread. I took a deep breath and braced myself as the train began to move once more, preparing to face the other half of the hellish storm. As we re-entered the eye wall, the peaceful moment of calm was shattered. The tornadoes swirled around us once more, their roaring and crackling a constant backdrop to the chaos that was happening all around us. The train continued its fight against the storm, dodging the tornadoes and powering through the towering waves. Every moment was a struggle, every breath a fight to stay alive. After battling through the eye wall and its tornadoes, the golden train finally emerged from the backside of the hurricane. The storm was still raging, but we were no longer in the direct path of the deadliest parts of the hurricane. Despite the danger that still surrounded us, I felt a sense of relief. We had survived the worst of the storm, and the worst was finally behind us. We continued sailing through the other side of the storm for what felt like an eternity. The sky was still dark and ominous, and the water was rough and choppy, but we were finally out of the worst of the hurricane. I breathed a sigh of relief as the storm began to fade in the distance, leaving behind a calm and peaceful ocean. After such an intense and dangerous experience, the peacefulness felt like a blessing. It was now 1 p.m., and we were finally approaching the east coast of the United States. The shoreline spread out before us, a beautiful sight that filled me with a sense of accomplishment after such a grueling journey. The golden train glimmered in the sunlight as it glided down the shoreline, its wheels clicking smoothly over the tracks as it made its way towards its ultimate destination. The train climbed the bank of the beach and rolled over the grass, its wheels leaving a trail of tracks behind it. As it approached the railroad tracks, I could sense its eagerness to return to its natural home. The train glided onto the tracks and picked up speed, its wheels picking up their clicking sound as it traveled through the open expanse of rolling farmland. The train finally arrived at the same station where I had begun my journey. The once peaceful platform was now bustling with people and activity. The sight of the train arriving back at the station brought a smile to my face. The whole experience, from the wild storms at sea to the serene landscapes of Europe, had been a roller coaster of emotions. But through it all, the Golden Train had proven to be the most incredible mode of transportation I had ever experienced. I quickly took out my phone and messaged my friends Ferdina, Bonfi, Chiku, Fexa, and Marie, along with my husband Jotaro, to let them know that I had returned safely and had one incredible adventure. Hey guys, just wanted to let you know that I'm back from my train journey. It was a wild ride, both literally and figuratively. Can't wait to tell you all about it. I stepped off the golden train, feeling a wave of contentment wash over me. I had gone on an incredible journey and now I was back home, surrounded by the familiar sights and sounds of my everyday life. The wind gently tousled my silver hair and I took a deep breath, savoring the fresh air of the station. I turned to look at the train, which seemed to glow even brighter now that I had stepped off its golden hull. It was a beautiful sight, a symbol of the journey I had just completed. With a wave of a hand, I teleported back to the nightclub, where my friends Ferdina, Bonfi, Chiku, Fexa, and Marie were waiting for me. As soon as I materialized, they bombarded me with questions, eager to hear about my journey. Tell us everything, Ferdina exclaimed. We want to hear every detail. I regaled my friends with every detail of my epic train journey. I described the breathtaking landscapes of Western Europe, the serene canals of Venice, the roaring sea of the Atlantic, and the wild and dangerous hurricane that we encountered at sea. My friends were enthralled, hanging on to every word as I painted a vivid picture of my incredible journey. They gasped and laughed in all the right places, clearly envious of my experiences. 
When I finished my tale, my friends all rushed forward and enveloped me in big hugs. They were clearly impressed and in awe of my journey. That was amazing, Bonfi exclaimed. Such a brave and adventurous journey, Chiku added. I can't believe you survived a hurricane, Marie said. I told my friends all about what the golden train looked like. I described its beautiful exterior, from its shiny gold paint to its intricate details. My friends were in awe of my description. It sounds like a magical train, Ferdina said. I can't believe something so beautiful exists, Fexa added. It's like something out of a fairy tale, Chiku mused. I teleported back home to my husband Jotaro, who was waiting for me with a warm smile. Welcome back, sweetheart, he said, pulling me into a warm embrace. How was the journey? I pulled out my phone and showed my friends the pictures I had taken of the golden train. They gasped in admiration, their eyes wide at the sight of the gleaming train. It's even more beautiful than I imagined, Bonfi said. It's like something out of a dream, Chiku whispered. Amazing, Fexa breathed, awestruck. My friend's eyes widened with excitement as I told them that next time I went on the golden train, I would bring them along and even my husband Jotaro. We'd love to go on a journey with you and Jotaro, Ferdina said. It would be an unforgettable experience, Bonfi agreed. Count us in, Chiku cheered. I teleported back home to my husband Jotaro, who was waiting for me with a warm smile. Welcome back, sweetheart, he said, pulling me into a warm embrace. How was the journey? I sat down with Jotaro and described my entire train journey to him. I regaled him with tales of my adventures in Western Europe, the tranquil canals of Venice, the tumultuous Atlantic Ocean, and the epic fight against the hurricane. Jotaro listened intently, his eyes widening at the details of my story. He was clearly enthralled and impressed by the experiences I had had. As I finished my tale, Jotaro clapped his hands in appreciation. That was truly incredible, sweetheart, he said. You had quite an adventure. You're a true adventuress. I added to my story, my excitement growing as I said, and next time, you, my friends, and I are all going on the golden train together. It will be an adventure of a lifetime, Jotaro's eyes lit up at the prospect. Count me in, he said. I'd be honored to join you on that journey. I wrapped my arms around Jotaro and pulled him close, our lips meeting in a tender and passionate kiss. The excitement and adrenaline from my journey combined with our passion, and we held on to each other tightly, grateful to be together again. As we finished the kiss, we held each other close, swaying gently to a slow and romantic song. Time seemed to stand still as we danced, lost in the moment, our love and affection for each other stronger than ever. I nuzzled my head against Jotaro's chest, feeling his heart beating in time with mine. For a moment, nothing in the world existed but the two of us, caught in a beautiful dance of love. We sat down and enjoyed a leisurely lunch together. The conversation was light and flirty, and we enjoyed each other's company as we ate. Jotaro playfully fed me bites of food, and I laughed and blushed, feeling like a young girl again. As we ate together, I couldn't help but feel grateful for the love and happiness we shared. After lunch, we both headed to the bedroom and cuddled in bed, feeling content and at peace with each other. I nestled into Jotaro's chest and he wrapped his arms around me, pulling me close. I could feel the steady beat of his heart and the warmth of his breath on my skin. As I lay in bed, listening to the steadiness of Jotaro's heartbeat, I couldn't help but feel overwhelmed with happiness. I was home, safe and sound, and I had an incredible adventure to look back on. But even more exciting was the thought of going on another adventure with my friends and Jotaro. I couldn't wait to plan our next golden train journey.